Hey guys, it's Pelican here and welcome to my Magical Sorcerer PvP build video for the Clockwork City patch. In this build video, I will be going through the sets to use, what skills to run, the CP passives as well as other things. This build has high magicka and stamina sustain, a moderate amount of damage, though most of your damage will be coming from good burst combos and knowing when to attack and light attack weaving because we have 41 about 41k magicka you will also be very hard to kill and you will have very high mobility because we are running streak and founder storm oops um without further ado let's get right into the build all right firstly I'll be going through the skills to run on this build. We are running on our front bar Inner Light, Crystal Frax, Flame Witch, Haunting Curse, Endless Fury, and Dawnbreaker. Inner Light will give us uh, the 10% 10 more crit chance on our front bar and also 7% more max magicka with this passive. That will increase our damage. And you can also use it to reveal uh, night blades that are invisible or use it to empower your attacks like frags. Next, uh, we are running crystal fragments. Pretty standard skill to use as a magical sorcerer. Not much explanation needed. Uh, just take note to cast this skill only when the instant charge the instant cast uh, proc is up so that it will do more damage and cost cost less but most importantly you won't you won't get interrupted because it will be instant flame reach uh, this will be our crowd control and our main spammable yes it can be spammed with the master inferno stuff with this stuff it actually costs uh, it costs less Magicka to cast then crushing shot and and does about the same damage I've actually hit um, a CP 100 guy who was like Not wearing much armor. I hit him for 8.8k. It was really ridiculous This skill is extremely strong and very broken with the master inferno stuff Next we are running haunting curse Pretty standard skill to use as a magical sorcerer like Frax. Uh, you will basically want to time this skill to hit together with your crystal fragments for maximum damage. Lastly, Endless Fury. This will be our execute. Endless Fury is easily one of the best executes in the game because you don't have to use it only when the enemy is low. You can apply it when the enemy is at full health and then burst him down to 20% and Endless Fury will kill him. Endless Fury also returns 4.4k magicka when you kill someone which is a lot of magicka. So when you're fighting multiple opponents and you manage to kill one, it will give you back a lot of resources needed to um, fight the other, other people. You can apply this before you burst or after you burst is up to you. Uh, personally, I prefer to apply it before so that you know uh, I don't have to apply it again after I burst and the instant that the instant they fall below 20%, they are dead. For our ultimate, we will be running Dawnbreaker or Smiting. You might be wondering why Dawnbreaker on a Magicka Sorcerer. Well, the thing is, Dawnbreaker is an extremely versatile offensive ultimate. It can be pretty much used on any build, even Magicka builds. That is because it scales off your highest stats. So in our case, our Dawnbreaker will be scaling off our maximum Magicka and our spell damage. Dawnbreaker also hits 20% harder on Vampires and Werewolves. And... That is really useful since there are a lot of vampires in Sewerdew. Uh, it also 
benefits from our sorcerer passive which increases physical damage by 5% and the damage over time is really helpful as well because it can proc implosion or it can also bring the enemy down below 20% and he will die from endless fury. Alternatives, you can also run shooting star. Shooting star will be my second go to for the ultimate because it hits it hits harder than Dawnbreaker minus the damage over time and it also gives ultimate back for each enemy hit so this is extremely effective against multiple players or guards at once. It also has a extremely strong ground AoE effect which you can use to your advantage by kiting people into it. Uh, Meteor costs more than Dawnbreaker, it costs 170 ultimate and it's also more easily countered than Dawnbreaker since there is a 1 to 2 second delay before the Meteor actually hits and by then uh, many people would be able to counter the Meteor by usually blocking or going into miss form uh, and that's why I prefer Dawnbreaker over Meteor now Meteor, having Meteor slaughtered uh, does increase the damage of your other abilities because of the Major's Guild's passive. For group play, I highly recommend running Negate. Negate is one of the strongest ultimates to use in, uh, in groups because a well-placed Negate can easily wipe an entire group of people when combined with ultimates from your other teammates. Negate basically prevents and prevents whoever is in it from casting magical skills or casting their ultimate this means that uh if you are if the healers of the group are caught in the negate they will be unable to heal the rest of their team which will cause them to die very quickly negate also does a lot of damage 2k every 0.5 second which is about uh 60 percent of your death show out you can also run Destro out, but I would recommend Negate over Destro out for groups because a good group can easily counter Destro out with your with heals. Negate will prevent them from healing. For our back bar, we are running Search, Streak, Bowler Storm, Harden Ward, Healing Ward, and Restro out. Search will be our source of uh, major sorcery for more damage. It also has a very strong heal and this heal will proc whenever you do critical damage for cooldown of 1 second. And com combined with Bounder Storm, if you have uh, multiple, if you are fighting multiple opponents, this will proc almost every second, giving you a lot of passive heals. We are running Streak. Streak is uh, probably one of the coolest skills in the game. It uh, gives you a lot of mobility and it actually hits pretty hard as well. As you can see, my Streak has a 2 tip of about 6k with a power surge and it is undodgeable. So I often use streak to execute people as you know uh after you burst someone when they get up if they are not dead yet the their first response is usually to dodge roll if they are a stamp build streak will hit them mid roll and it will proc endless fury streak can also proc the implosion passive now do take note not to cast streak too many times like dodge roll it has a cooldown and if you cast it uh, within 4 seconds, it will cost a lot more and this effect will stack. So for example, my second streak will cost 5k, my third streak will cost about 7k and my fourth streak will cost 8k. It will keep on stacking and stacking until you are out of magicka. So do take note not to cast it too many times 
I personally recommend not casting it more than three times. I usually cast it a maximum of two times. We are also running Boundless Storm. Uh, Boundless Storm is an extremely useful skill because it gives us, uh, it increases our resistance. We will take 10% less damage uh, when our shields are down. And as you know, it also procs search for heals. And since it is shock damage, Boundless Storm can also proc implosion. And the most, the best part about this skill is that it gives you major expedition. As a sorcerer, stamina or magicka, your main strength will be your mobility. With Streak and Boundless Storm, you are a speed demon on the battlefield. You will be moving extremely fast and you can easily get in behind cover and go around obstacles if you are in trouble. Boundless Storm lasts 7.5 seconds and you can cast this every 7.5 seconds to keep up the major expedition although it might not be very friendly on your magicka sustain but it is uh, doing that can be really life saving in some situations especially when you are running away from a large group of players. Harden Ward, um, this is pretty much standard issue for Magicka Sorcerer as well. This will be our main, our main defense skill. Make sure to take this morph and not the other morph. The other morph is way too weak and you will get killed easily through it. Harden Ward, uh, it scales off your maximum Magicka only. That it doesn't scale off your spell damage, which is the reason we are running a lot of Magicka. Uh, lastly, we have Healing Ward. Healing Ward um, will be our... We will be using Healing Ward when our health is low for additional protection and uh, also to heal us back to full health. Uh, the lower your health is, the stronger your healing ward will be. I recommend uh, casting healing ward uh, when you are 60% or below, but you can also do it uh, when you are more than 60%. Now do take note, the healing ward, although it does have an initial heal, your main heal will be coming from the ward itself expiring. When it expires, it heals you for a lot. If a uh, full shield can easily heal you for over 15k, which is basically instant full health. But since it heals uh, based on your ward's remaining strength, you have to make sure, if possible, when the ward runs out, it is at full power. Which is why you always cast hardened ward first, followed by healing ward. Because your hardened ward. By doing this, your hardened ward will be the one that is taking damage first, giving time for your healing ward to expire and heal you for more. Uh, for our ultimate, we are running Restro out. Um, I know it's a very cheesy ultimate to use and it's still very overpowered despite the cost nerf. It is extremely strong in a solo situation because it basically gives you it basically makes you invincible for a short amount of time and it also greatly increases your critical damage so you can use this both defensively and offensively uh, and one thing that you might not know about rest out is the major force and major protection that it gives although it says five seconds it actually lasts 10 seconds this is because it refreshes every time uh, every second you get healed. So your last refresh will be 5 seconds into using the skill and hence uh, the major force and major protection will, will last 10 seconds. Major protection does affect your shields. Your shields will take less damage when you have major protection on so keep that in mind. And the most important thing you must remember is that Ratio out isn't necessarily an instant full health button. It doesn't make you 
invincible when you cast it it just makes you really hard to kill so when you are taking a lot of damage and you're on low you can make sure after you cast Restro out always cast a hardened ward just to be safe you can get one shot through your through your Restro out if you are not careful uh, that's it for the skills for our item sets we are running five shackle breaker on both of our bars shackle breaker is a really good set because it gives us a moderate amount of damage as well as a sustain having good stamina sustain is essential in for an open world magical sorcerer because as i said uh your main strength as a sorcerer will be your mobility and in order to have high mobility you will need to have good stamina sustain to, to enable you to sprint uh, dodge roll block and break free often for our next set uh, we'll be running shot of the leech this set can be found in the creep of hearts group dungeon and we will be running this set on our back bar only. Uh, this set will give us more than enough magical sustain for any situation when combined with Shackle Breaker and the drink that we are running, Witch Mothers. And it can be a pain to farm the restoration stuff. So another alternative to, uh, to this set is Wizards Repost. You will not have as much uh, you will not have as much magical recovery as this as using leech but you will be able to apply a 15% death damage debuff to everybody who attacks you uh, for our next set we are running one piece dormi highest or however this is pronounced this is easily the best one piece set in the game it gives us max stem and max magicka which helps our shield and our stamina sustain and for our front bar we are running the master's inferno staff this will make our flame reach extremely broken and overpowered and will also allow you to spam it for the traits we are running five impenetrable and two infused on the big pieces the big pieces can be your head your shirt or your legs the reason we are running in pen as a sorcerer even though your damage shields can't be critted is because the moment your your hardened ward drops if you do not have in pen you will get one shotted you will need this to protect you when your when your shoes drop uh, you can run less in pen I'm running five pieces of in pen the minimum I will recommend is uh, three pieces of in pen you can also run divines or well fitted if you like to sprint and dodge roll a lot uh, for our enchantments on our big infused pieces we are running the prismatic defense glyph for for more health and magic for, for more health and stamina and the rest of the pieces we are running standard uh, max magicka uh, enchants for our for our jewelry we are running all spell damage because we have more than enough magical recovery already if you are running wizards with pause you can swap one of the spell damage for magical recovery since you will not be having that much uh, recovery for our front bar we are running sharpen and shock and chan the reason we are running shock and chan is because um, sorcerers benefit more from sorcerers do more shock damage and the shock and chan also applies uh, has a chance to apply a minor vulnerability which increases your damage done to the opponent by 8% for a short amount of time alternatives to the enchantment you can run the prismatic cliffs to do a lot more damage against vampires you can also run oblivion damage uh, you can also run flame damage uh, enchant 
to apply the burning effect and also do more damage against vampires. Uh, for the trade, we are running Sharpen. You can run Nern Horn if you want, it doesn't matter. Um, both are both are about the same for uh, for stuff. Although people say Nern Horn is better, actually um, both are just about the same. You can run any one. I just choose Sharpen because I'm more used to it. For our back bar, we are running an Infused Restoration stuff. We are going Infused because uh, we are running the weapon damage enchantment on our back bar. With infuse, you will get about 100 to 150 more weapon damage when this enchantment drops. And it will also completely remove the cooldown on this enchantment. This will ensure that this will make your burst a lot more reliable. You, when you burst, you will be light attacking on the back bar to proc the enchantment and then you will do your burst with 450 more weapon damage for our Munda stone we are running the mage because it gives us 2k more max magicka which not only benefits our damage but it also benefits our the strength of our hardened ward we are also a stage 3 vampire uh, you don't really need stage 4 unless you plan to stick about a lot the reason we are going vampire is because it gives us 10% more magicka and stamina recovery, which is really useful when combined with Shackle Breaker and the potions that we are using. We are using standard uh, tripods. The reason why we are using tripods is because it gives us 20% more stamina recovery and the burst heal from, the, from consuming the pot can save you in some situations. You can also run immovability pots if you want. Uh, I personally don't feel for a need to run immoves on a magicka sorcerer. Uh, you will also take, as a vampire, you will also take less damage when your health is low. This can be really helpful and life saving when you are stuck on low health and there are a lot of people spamming executes on you. Other than that, I am also a high elf. High Elf is pretty much the best race for a Magicka Sorcerer because we get more damage on our elemental skills, we get 10% more Magicka and we also get 9% uh, more Magicka recovery. You could also be a Breton. Uh, Breton has, uh, also has 10% more Max Magicka, 4k more Spell Resistance and 3% less, 3% uh, cost reduction on their spells. But the I still think that high health is better because with more our with increased magicka recovery, since we are running a lot of magicka recovery already, I think that uh, the 9% more magicka recovery will be way more beneficial than the Breton's 3% uh, cost reduction. You can also run a Dark Elf. Uh, having a Dark Elf will make your flame reach and your light attacks hit a lot harder. And it also gives you uh, more stamina, more max stamina. But uh, you won't be having as much uh, magicka sustain. Lastly, uh, make sure you have all your passives, especially your alchemy passives. You would want a uh, 3 medicinal use. For to ensure 100% uptime on your potions, make sure you have your racial passives, your alliance warfare passives, your undaunted passives, your vampire passives, armor passives, weapon passives, and your class passives. Make sure to not miss any of them out. Alright, lastly, I'll be showing you my CP setup. Um, remember, these are just my CP passives. You can change them according to your playstyle. So for the blue tree, uh, we are running 64 elemental expert, 66 elf born, and 26 spell erosion. We are running 72 master at arms. Uh, this uh, passive will benefit your dawnbreaker. Two shattering blows and nothing in this tree. 
For our red tree, we are running 66 ironclad, 28 resistant, 28 thick skin, 37 hardy and elemental defender, and 34 bastion. Now, the reason we are running thick skin is because damage over time abilities actually do a lot of damage to your wards. They will weaken your wards and make you a lot more vulnerable to your burst. Having points in this passive will really help you. Resistant uh, to give us more crit resistance uh, for better survivability when our shoes are down. Bastion to make our hardened ward and healing ward stronger. Now, uh, you don't really need a lot of points into this. It's better to put the points into these four passives Ironclad, Thick Skin, Hardy, and Ellie because the reduced damage also applies to your damage shields. So, you don't really need a lot of points into this. I recommend not going over 40 points into this. For our Green Tree passives, we are running 61 into Warlord. 8 Sprinter because we sprint a lot in open world, you can put less or more into this if you want. 0 Siphoner, uh, you are not going to win a fight against multiple opponents by running them out of resources. So we don't put any points in this. If you are more into dueling or group play, you can put points into this passive. 56 Arcanist for your Magicka recovery. We are not running any Tenacity because as a light armor magicka sorcerer, uh, you are not going to do a lot of heavy attacks, so this passive won't be as beneficial. 61 into tumbling, we dodge roll a lot, so we will want to reduce the cost by as much as possible. Uh, do keep in mind that light streak, uh, dodge roll does have a cooldown, so if you use one against two soon, it will cost a lot more stamina and they can run you up very quickly. So, do keep in mind not to streak and uh, dodge roll too often. And we are also running 44 in the Shadow Ward because I block a lot, so it's a really good passive to have. So, other than that, that's all for the champion point system. Uh, this build does work really well in uh, non-CP. The only difference is that uh, your stem sustain won't be as uh, won't be as high as in the in CP campaigns. You also have less magicka, so that uh, so your hardened ward will not be as strong as non CP. But it still works really well, really well. I love this build. It works very well in both non CP and CP. Uh, that's all, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and. Do leave a comment uh, if you have any questions or if I miss anything out and have a nice day.